Today we're going to be looking at how we can run Python scripts on our phone. And in this video we're going to be doing it on iOS and in a future video I'll also be going over the version that allows us to do it on Android. But for this I went ahead and installed an app called Pythonista and with that we're able to run scripts natively on our iOS operating system. So let's jump right into it by tapping on the application and from what you can see, it's pretty much just a basic code editor that allows us to type code and to run code. I did not create the script here, but if we run it, you'll see that we can roll some dice and it works like a native iOS application. Or actually, this was meant to be used as a widget, which I can use on my home screen. But I'm going to exit out of that. And I believe this app was made more for the iPad because coding on your phone can be quite annoying. But for those of you who are on the go, Pythonista is one of the best apps on the App Store. This is not a sponsored video, unfortunately. I'm just here to showcase the app and pretty much all the examples that came with it. It gives you a lot of examples. And one of the cooler examples are the games here, such as Brick Breaker. Someone wrote all of this code. I wish they put the, uh, the credit at the bottom or somewhere because it's absolutely crazy that you can write all of this code on an iPhone or on an iPad and that you can run it natively and you can actually play the game, which I found to be absolutely crazy for a Python script. And I'm not really good at Brick Breaker, but as you can see, it works quite smooth and you can also exit out of that. And let's explore a different app. Let's see, maybe we can go to plotting. So here we have some plots. We can check something such as a motion plot and you can see they import motion, they import matplotlib and so on. And when you run it, we can click on continue. And we'll see what happens when we move the phone slightly. So that's what I just did on my phone. I moved it up and down. You didn't see that part, but it created this graph based on the sensors from the phone. So you can capture a lot of phone information as well. It will take some knowledge on Python and, and how iOS works but it's super cool. I think this is absolutely insane. So a lot of you might be wondering, okay, what about packages? What kind of packages comes with Pythonista? Well, if you tap on the module section, you'll see it comes with the entire standard library. And right now I believe this is Python 3.10 and that's the version they've included with this app. I'm sure Python 3.11 will come out eventually, but everything that was in Python 3.10 should be included. And also we have some built-in packages or some external packages such as beautiful soups. We also have pandas and numpy and a lot of crazy packages that we usually use. We also have OpenAI in case you want to use ChatGPT or those features that come with OpenAI. We have a lot of packages here. And then I think there's the option also to create your own packages. As far as I understand, there's no way to use pip install or there are some crazy workarounds that you have to research yourself, but in the app, there's no pip from what I've seen so far. But moving on, we can try to create our own script. We can add this plus symbol and tap on empty script and here we'll call it uh, main.py and create. Now in main.py, we can do what we usually do. We can try to print some sort of hello world. So print hello world world. And if we run the script, it's going to run it at the bottom. That graph is not supposed to be there, but if we clear the console and run it again, you'll see we'll get hello world printed to the console. And we can do some more complex operations than that. We can easily import, for example, requests. And with requests, we can create a URL of type string, which is going to be equal to, let's make something up such as https double dot two slashes www.apple.com and then we can try to get something from that request so we can say request is equal to requests dot get and here we'll add the url which will just be the url then we can print the request dot what did they call it the https code or the code i believe it was status request dot status so what I don't like about this app is that it doesn't give you any suggestions, which I rely on a lot. And response object has no attribute status. 
So that's actually something pretty cool. I didn't know this earlier, but it does give you an error if you try to do something that doesn't work. So it kind of simulates that uh, compilation error that you'd get in Java, for example. So it's not running the script unless we actually fix that error. So the answer was easier than that. It was status code. And if we run that, we're going to get a 200 status because it was able to retrieve the information from that link. So it works perfectly fine. I just wish it had some more suggestions and I don't think I found that option when I went to settings. But uh, yeah, I don't remember seeing any place that actually allows you to get those suggestions. So you're going to have to be a much more hardcore Python programmer than I am when it comes to actually using attributes and functions because it doesn't seem like it suggests much. But really the sky is the limit with this app. You can do anything you want regarding the iPhone and you can even create your own scripts that you can run on your iPhone. So if we run this here, we can also draw something which is very basic, but it's cool that you can do this in Python on your iPhone. And maybe we can just showcase one more. We can go to animation and we can tap on magic text. And here the code looks quite nice. It's quite easy to read. I will mention though that one thing that might get a bit confusing is pretty much how it wraps the lines. I mean, here's line 49, for example, and of course we're on a limited screen space, so it's going to start pushing the lines down, which in Python is quite awkward to have everything on the same indentation when working with these parameters or when trying to fit everything on a single line. Like uh, take line 53, for example, we have an equal sign and right below it, we have the actual value. So that's something interesting that you're going to have to get used to when you start programming on this app. But otherwise, it's a very cool app. It's very easy to use and it has a lot you can do with it. And the best part is that you can actually create apps on your iPhone that you can test out immediately just by running the script. But yeah, if you are looking for an app for running Python, on your phone, definitely give Pythonista a try. It's worth the 10 euros or whatever your local currency is. It costs practically nothing for an app so powerful. But anyways, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know what you think about this app in the comment section down below, or if you have any other questions regarding it, I'll do my best to answer, or I'll even make a follow-up video regarding this app. But with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.